Welcome to Lingua Musica, where music is the universal language. I'm Joe Kendrick, very glad to be joined by Balsam Range at the beautiful Altamont Theater here in Asheville, North Carolina. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi. Thank hey, you. Joe. Yeah, We're joined by Mark Pruitt, Darren Nicholson, Tim Surratt, and Buddy Melton, and Caleb Smith yes, sir. in front of their show tonight. And some big things going on in the world of Balsam Range. I know you've been up to some recording and getting ready for your fourth album. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, <clears throat> our, uh, we had a lot of success off of our last record, uh, Trains I Missed. Uh, Trains I Missed actually went in Song of the Year last year. That was a pretty big deal for a bunch of uh, Haywood County guys. And uh, so our fourth project, we want it to be uh, we want it to be big. We want it to be impacting. So we've uh, gone through I don't know twenty or twenty five songs and demoed a few of them. And uh, now we're to the point where we're kind of picking and choosing and and seeing what's actually going to go on the record. So. So you've got some songs, but I read on your website, which is balsamrange.com, about uh, the process of working it up and some of the preliminary tunes you might be covering and that sort of thing, and how many songs that you're going to choose from. Now, that's not all that uncommon to go into a record with a lot more songs than wind up on the record, but tell me a little bit about why that happens. Can you not just decide when you record a song and know that that's it, or do you go in and how, how does that process? How do you how do you sort all that out? Uh, for me, for me, it's a you know we uh, we try to get a well rounded album, and you know sometimes great songs. We've had trains I missed. We we played with it, uh, listened to it for the on the second project, and it didn't make the <coughs> didn't make the second project. It, you know it fit the third project, and so as you, as you start listening to these songs and see which ones kind of come together and, and seem to make a, a well-rounded record and and we, we just like to go through a lot of songs because we we want the best 12 for the record not the first 12 so we just spend a lot of time listening to songs and and that's the fun part of it working up songs and uh, trying new things you really don't know what's going to happen with it until you just actually play it as a band and it kind of brings new life to it do you have anything thematically or, or lyrically that, that has turned up so far? And can you give us a peek at what it might be? Yeah, we've had a, we've had a few that um, we're still in that process where we, we try to get a, a list and, and listen to all of them closely and make sure we don't throw one out uh, that's good. But like Buddy said, we want a well-rounded project, and that means, you know, key changes, tempo changes. There's four lead singers, you know, try to feature everybody and and find songs that are, you know, different styles or feels. But there's a couple There's a couple that I think will definitely go on there just because they're so different. One's, a, I think, an Almond Brothers tune. <laughs> they make it on there. <laughs> we all love the Almond Brothers. Well, a good cover can, can really be a, a positive. Yeah. And, yeah. and bluegrass, like any other style of music, is, is no stranger to covering other styles of yeah, music in, the, in their songs. I think uh, in selling records, a lot of times people will, they're more attracted to a record to buy it if they they see something on there that they recognize. And so that's kind of a way for us to sneak our songs on there for them to give them a chance to hear songs like Trains I Miss. They may pick it up to hear. We usually try to put one or two covers on a on an album, but we're not a cover band by any means, you know. Uh, but maybe something familiar when people come come to see us. Well, speaking of other styles of music, Darren, you have a, another side project, and and you guys also have done things outside of Balsam Range. Uh, tell us a little bit about your interests in music that's not strictly blue, bluegrass, or at least strictly what you do in Balsam Range. I think one reason <clears throat> that makes Balsam Range so different, and we've talked about this a lot in, in a lot of interviews and uh, different things, but we all listen to different things. Um, Tim and I both like to, to listen to jazz. Um, I grew up, my mom and dad, my mom was a big Jim Croce and James Taylor and Leo Cocky and Gordon Lightfoot fan, so I grew up listening to that stuff. Um, I've got three kids, so I'm listening to a lot of uh, uh, modern country now that not a lot of it makes a lot of sense, but <laughs> I kind of have to listen to it. But, uh, <clears throat> there and Justin listen. Bieber cover coming on this. Yes, yes. Justin Bieber. <laughs> Ooh, baby, baby. <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> 
But we all do listen to different things. Darren listens to it. He's a big uh, classic country music lover. And uh, um, I think that's, we all bring something different uh, individually that um, it usually ends up sounding kind of cool, you know. Uh, but that, that's what I listen to. I listen to a lot of jazz and a lot of old stuff. And um, I listen to some bluegrass. I don't listen to a lot of bluegrass. Uh, but I know these other guys listen to different stuff too. He has to listen to me like 200 dates a year. So that's <laughs> I listen to Boston <laughs> Rings a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to listen. I, I still like a, I guess it's the, you call it classic rock now, the rock and roll that was popular when I was a kid, which mm. was a pretty good while ago. And the fun part, as Caleb was saying, the fun part of this band is that nothing's really off limits. And when we get into the process like we are now, or at the stage we are now with this upcoming project, you know, guys will bring in songs. We all bring in songs that we want the other guys to hear. And when you first think about it, you're like, man, I don't, I don't know. And then we get to, playing around with them and suddenly it's cool you know it, it works so I, that's to me the fun part of it is finding things that are not uh, exactly gun barrel straight bluegrass tunes and making them bluegrass tunes mm -hmm. I guess for me uh, I listen uh, since the Boston Range came about and, and trying to be an original material based band and you get a reputation for having material that's, that uh, identifies you and you have a sound and I, I some of those songs, some of our, our more popular songs, were written by some friends that are songwriters, and I find myself listening to a lot of demo-type songs from, like, Mylon Miller, who wrote, wrote Candy Fork Crib and Burn George Down, and Mark Bumgarner wrote on that one. Those guys are pulling that and writing and listening to new, newer songs. So I'm kind of out of touch with some of the some of the stuff on the radio anymore because I you can almost get obsessed with trying to find this, those songs, you know. But uh, it's fun. It's fun to hear that different people's uh, approach to that. And Mile and I worked on some historical projects for the county we were from, and, and uh, we actually may record one of those songs on Boston Range. It kind of brings a lot of pride and, and uh, to the, the, ca the county where we all live and grew up, so it, it may make the project. Well, I like on the website on the banner on balsamrange.com, it says where the music lives, breathes, and grows. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a very evocative kind of phrase there. Uh, and it brings to mind the question of your music is growing. It's, it's not necessarily static, although it is traditional music. Do you have any thoughts on where bluegrass music, or at least the music of Balsam Range, is going to go? Well, you know, <clears throat> part of the reason that statement's on there is we're very proud of the area we're from. We're, this this area of western North Carolina has a very rich musical heritage. And <clears throat> even even with the, the folks that we all grew up listening to, it their music's changed over the years. They, that's the wonderful thing about art is there's no limitation. And <clears throat> I think we want to keep recording the best songs we can and, and putting out... Uh, you know, songs that people can relate to, songs that they're proud of, songs that maybe aren't dated necessarily. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, these guys, the sky's the limit. When I, when we started this band, I think we were, none of us really knew where it would go. Or, um, but we keep getting new opportunities every day to, to travel, to record, to do different things, collaborative projects with some of our heroes, and and that's a, that's really fun. I mean. The, the unknown, you know, I don't know what's in store, but it seems to be seems to be working for us right now. Well, we did we. <clears throat> this band grew out of a jam session, you know, that uh, we got together one winter night five years ago now, and um, we didn't have intentions of, you know, starting a band, and it's already way exceeded what we thought we were going to do. So that's the fun part, as Darren said, just to see now what. So it's it's a it's a it's become a big part of our lives, and uh, it's very exciting to see where it could go. Yeah, you've gone very far in a pretty short period of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's I guess is not intending to start a band. There's really no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to have fun. Yeah. We just yeah. want to entertain and 
do do music that we all believe in and that we you know, songs we believe in. Songs like Trains I Missed. We did over 200 dates last year and we played that song a lot and I never got old to me. Mm -hmm. It's a good song. Played it in bars and played it in churches. <laughs> That's a good song. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, we did. Well, speaking of some of your other interests, one of them is sitting right here in front of me, this beautiful mm -hmm. guitar that Caleb has built and is going to be playing tonight. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, this instrument and, and uh, a hobby which is uh, pretty well done, it seems? <laughs> well, um, in the winter of 2007, I decided that I was going to build a guitar uh, over over the winter. And uh, I've always been fascinated with old, old guitars, and <clears throat> especially Martins and Gibsons uh, from the 30s and 40s. And there was something about what those guys did in that time frame that was perfect. Every, everything they did was right. And it's funny because those two companies actually got away from that and started mass producing, so they, they kind of walked away from what they were doing right. So I own a couple of old guitars, and um, I started you know, measuring them and, and weighing them and looking inside of them. And, uh, so then I, in the winter of 2007, I built my, my first guitar. Turned out okay. It's in my shop right now without a top. I ended up taking the top back off of it. But <laughs> um, so I, I really, I really didn't start doing it to, for it to become. It's actually more than a hobby now. Um, I, I got orders for a couple guitars. Uh, I sold those and um, ended up building more. Uh, and you know, the more that you do of anything, the more you learn about it. And, uh, so this is number eight. Um, I, there's there's actually number nine is in my spray booth right now. And number ten is a guitar I built for my dad for Christmas this year. Um, this is a <clears throat> a guitar. It's Brazilian rosewood back uh, back and sides and um, Appalachian spruce top. Um, and the the fellow who who this belongs to, um, he's not seen it yet. He's coming to the show tonight to pick it up. So he asked me if I would play it tonight, but so I told him that I would. But it, it turned out nice. Uh, but like I said, it, it's becoming more of a hobby, and I didn't know that I, I didn't really mean for it to, but uh, I've got a waiting list of 28 guitars right now. So um, I'm getting ready to start number 12, 11, 12, and 13, and 14. Um, it usually takes, I've, I've been building them in batches of three, and it usually takes about a month and a half to build three guitars. So I'm going to throw one more in there this time because I'm learning little tricks, how to, you know, shortcuts to make and uh, that sort of thing. But um, I really enjoy doing it. Um, I've worked with wood all my life and uh, done cabinet work and built homes. And this is nothing like building cabinets or homes, I'll go ahead and tell you that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but... I've got a lot of good friends that have helped me, Wayne Henderson and John Arnold, uh, Lynn Dudenbostel, Don Wilson. Those are just a few of in, the independent guitar builders that I can call any time and say, hey, you know, I'm having problems, and, and they're all, they all bend over backwards to help me. But um, I do have a website. It's calebsmithguitars.com. Uh, people can go there and check them out and uh, see what I'm up to. And, if they in, are interested in a guitar, it's about a year and a half right now. So, um, but that's that's kind of what the hobby turned into. A, I feel like if I'm not in the shop, that I'm losing time and I'm losing money. So it's becoming a job, <laughs> <laughs> which is cool because it, it gives me some responsibility other than my family. So it needs a job. <laughs> well, it's certainly a beautiful instrument. It sounds great too. Thank you very much. And, and you. what you said about the people that come to help you, the other guitar makers that, yeah. that, that yeah. lend a hand. It, that is a, a common theme in the bluegrass world. Uh, I think I see it all the time. And it also reminds me of another thing that you're doing is a benefit for Stop Child Abuse Now. You've got oh, a couple yeah. of benefits coming up in the spring. And I wanted to ask you about how you got involved with that. Tim, I think you're central to that. Well, uh, Darren uh, knows the people more than I do that, uh, that got us on the, uh, the SCAN program. I work with uh, uh, situations like that every day uh, in, in my other line of work. But Darren 
I guess, talk to those people originally, didn't you? Yeah, we do. We're very involved. We, The opportunity presents itself to do a lot of benefits each year. And by the end of the year, I'd say we probably do 40 or 50, you know, um, each year. And we're talk, we're, we started uh, this past December and hosted our, our own benefit concert for the very first time. And we're hoping to turn that into an annual thing for Haywood County, obviously not on the level of of uh, Warren Haynes at at this time, but you know down the road we'd like to do something very similar uh, in Haywood County, which is you know about 30 minutes from Asheville. But uh, uh, we do a lot of that stuff every year. We do a lot of benefits, and Tim always says if you don't pitch in your part and we don't pitch in our part, somebody won't have a part to pitch you. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> but, uh, well, I enjoy doing that. Those kinds of things. We, as I've said, we. This band's gone a lot further than we would have ever imagined. Um, and to be able to do something with it and pay back the community a little bit. Because we, you know, we travel all over the country and all over the, starting to go all over the world. But we're still playing a lot of stuff around home and we like playing around home. And the same people from our area keep coming to see us. They'll be very supportive. They'll be, you know, first name basis on just about everybody we can see here tonight. And if we can do something for that community, then that's it's 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 a privilege and it's the only right thing to do. So, well, gentlemen, it's wonderful to get to talk with you today. Wish you the best of luck on your show tonight and your upcoming record. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for another Lingua Musica. I'm Joe Kendrick. Very happy to be joined by Balsam Range here at the Altamont Theater in Asheville, North Carolina.